Greetings and blessings. My name is Tom Lelio, and this is Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution on the church. And today, we're not just going to be talking about Lumen Gentium or about the constitution, but we're actually going to be diving into the text itself and reading what the church has to say about her nature and her mission. This is the text that we're going to be using, the Vatican Collection, Vatican Council II, Volume 1, the conciliar and post-conciliar documents. And so if you want to read along or if you want to read more of the documents and actually read the document in its entirety, I would highly recommend this text to do so. The very first sentence, Christ is the light of humanity. And this is where the document gets its name from, Lumen Gentium light of humanity. So Christ is the light of humanity. So from the very beginning, the Council Fathers are talking about, hey, this is not about us. This is about Christ. And we're going to see what Christ has to say about the church that he established. Continuing on, since the church in Christ is in the nature of a sacrament, a sign and instrument, the church proposes to set forth her own nature and universal mission. This is what Lumen Gentium is about. It's about the church talking about what is our nature, what is our mission, and how do we find that in Christ. The conditions of the modern world lends greater urgency to this duty of the church. For while men of the present day are drawn ever more closely together by social, technical, and cultural bonds, it will remain for them to achieve full unity in Christ. And so the fathers are recognizing that you know, we're coming together as a, as a world society in a powerful way today through television, through media, through technology. And, and that's bringing us all together, but that's only going to take us so far. In order to achieve full unity, we need to find our common union in Christ. So let's talk about the mystery of the church. Where do we get this mystery from? Well, it comes from the Trinity. The Council Fathers are quick to point out that the only way we can understand our union as church is if we understand the union between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, in paragraph 2, they point out, The Eternal Father chooses to raise up men to share in His own divine life. He determined to call together in a holy church those who would believe in Christ. So, the church is in the plan of the Father from the very beginning. And so, if we're to understand this, we need to go to God and see what does He have in store for us. I think it's really interesting um, because we see how Christ establishes church as, as the document continues. The mystery of the church is inaugurated through Christ's words, actions, and miracles, but is principally through the person of Christ that the kingdom is revealed. So the Father has the plan. Christ inaugurates the plan. And this is what I find really interesting. You see, Christ didn't give us a Bible, right? He didn't give us the Bible as an instruction manual. He, he gave us a church. He, he called people from around him, and he established his church on St. Peter and empowered the Twelve. And that's how the church begins. God doesn't give us the Bible, so to speak. He gave us the church first. And it's through his inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the church is able to discern the sacred scriptures. And so it continues to talk about in paragraph four, the Holy Spirit was sent in order that he might continually sanctify the church. So the Father has a plan, Christ inaugurates that plan, and the Spirit sanctifies it. Hence, the universal church is seen to be a people brought into unity from the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about this unity for a second. The love of the Father for the Son is poured out. The Son receives that love and pours it back out to the Father. And the love between the Father and the Son is so powerful. It is so dynamic. It is so real that it's given its own name. It becomes or it is a, a being in and of itself. That is the Holy Spirit. And so this union of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, this common union among the Trinity, becomes a holy communion. And if the church is to be the church of Christ, we must have a holy communion between the faithful and between the faithful and the Trinity itself. 
This is key. Continuing on about the mystery of the church, we get into one of those sections that is really a buzz quote section from Lumen Gentium, and that is paragraph number eight. This is the sole church of Christ we profess to be one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. This is the sole church of Christ. It's not the church of St. Peter. It's not the church of St. Paul. This is the church of Jesus Christ. And so, the fathers point out, the church of Christ, constituted and organized as a society in the present world, subsists in the Catholic Church. Nevertheless, many elements of sanctification and of truth are found outside its visible confines. Since these are gifts belonging to the Church of Christ, they are forces impelling towards Catholic unity. So if we break that down, it basically says the Church of Christ subsists in the Church. Nevertheless, there may be elements of sanctification and truth found outside of the Church. However, since these elements actually belong to the Church, these elements are calling those individuals into a communion with the Catholic Church. This idea of subsistence comes from the Latin term substantia, which means being or essence. And so what's going on here is the Church is saying that the Church of Christ has its essence in the Catholic Church. That the Catholic Church is the main way in which the fullness of the Church of Christ is experienced here on earth today. And so, in order to get to heaven, we're, we have this one road. It's not a multiple of all roads lead to heaven, but we have this one road, which is the Church of Christ. And the fullness of the Church of Christ is found in the Catholic Church, okay? Now, other denominations, other worldviews may participate in the Church of Christ. And insofar as they participate in that, they are actually participating in the Catholic Church. They are actually uh, being drawn into union through the Catholic Church. But obviously other denominations, other worldviews would veer off of, of, of that participation at some point in time. But this is huge. The idea of the Church of Christ subsists in the Catholic Church, finds its fullness in the Catholic Church.